Listen, Lord, as I pray, you are faithful and honest and will answer my prayer. I am your servant. Don't try me in your court because no one is innocent by your standards. My enemies are chasing me and crushing me in the ground. I am in total darkness like someone long dead. I'm giving up all hope and I am numb all over. I remember to think about the many things you did in years gone by. Then I lift my hands in prayer because my soul is a desert, thirsty from water from you. Please hurry Lord, answer my prayer. I feel hopeless. Don't turn away and leave me here to die. Each morning let me learn more about your love because I trust you. I come to you in prayer asking for your guidance. Please rescue me from my enemies, Lord. I come to you for safety. You are my God. Show me what you need me to do and let your gentle spirit lead me through the right path. Be true to your name, Lord, and keep my life safe. Use your power to protect me from trouble. I am your servant. Show me how much you love me by destroying my enemies. Amen. Yo, 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 it's your boy Jane88, along with Carly Bennett, who's putting together the visuals for this YouTube autobiography. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and follow us on YouTube and all social media platforms. Today's hip hop documentary is highly requested among the YouTube community. This duo right here is innovative, influential, heartthrobs, trendsetters, pioneers for the city of Atlanta and the youth pursuing hip hop going forward from the early 1990s to this day. We present to you the autobiography of no other than Criss Cross. Let's get into it. Chris Kelly was born August 1978 and Chris Smith was born January 1979. These two individuals formed Criss Cross. Now Chris Kelly was originally born in New Jersey but he relocated to Atlanta in grade school. That's where he met Chris Smith who was relatively popular in the area since he had an older brother who also attended the school as well. Uh, they met in the first grade. It took them a while to click, but once they started getting to know each other, they were best friends. Yin and yang. Couldn't find one without the other. High top fades, fresh sneakers and clothes. They would get all the girls. What more can you ask for? Uh, fun fact as well. Uh, they also attended school with hip-hop artist Young Dro, uh, who's definitely uh, with T.I. Um, T.I. knew them as well. Um, they're all from the west side. T.I. knew about them as well. Um, they also went to school with Polo the Don, Rocco, Killer Mike's sister, and Big Gip's sister, and also Corey Diligent, who was a battle rapper. He knew about them, and they were the complete opposite, which I believe uh, to an extent. But yeah, uh, was, they're from the west side of Atlanta. So you know, Jermaine Dupri, he definitely, he was the writer pretty much. He was telling their story through his rhyme. So the Chris's will go ahead and tell Jermaine Dupri everything they experienced through Atlanta growing up as kids. And Jermaine Dupri will write the rhymes and put the beats together. That's how they came with Totally Crossed Out. And of course, you know, they had to make the hit. So they made it family friendly, but the Chris's told their story and Jermaine Dupri is one who wrote it. Um, they would go to concerts together. Uh, the Chris's will go over Jermaine's house early in the morning, watch cartoons, and just be in the studio with Jermaine as he'll pitch them ideas and they either will agree to it collectively or disagree. Um, the first song they recorded was Little Boys in the Hood. They actually recorded another song previously with Left Eye because Left Eye was playing a big part in getting the Totally Crossed Out uh, idea put together. They actually had a song called The Girl Is Mine or My Girl. But uh, I heard it wasn't that good, and they didn't release it. So Little Boys in the Hood was the first song they did, and they actually got signed off of that. Then they recorded Totally Crossed Out, and they put out the song Jump. Now, Totally Crossed Out was actually recorded twice. Once in Jermaine Dupri studio, I think in September, fall of 91, they then recorded it again in Philadelphia, I think early 92. So they recorded the album twice. Jump took off. Now, the Chris's were still in school when Jump was actually on TV and on the radio. They were still in school, as a matter of fact. But they had to leave school once they were in, in Living Color. Once that came out, just had to get homeschooled. From there on in, they blew up. They were on the road getting tutors and everything like that. So five million uh, copies of Totally Crossed Out. So they were blowing up. They were blowing up, man. They were, they were definitely doing their thing. Uh, they were doing tours over the U.S. 
uh, they had their own video game. They were on a lot of talk shows. They were doing like meet and greets and everything like that. So they were living. They were definitely living the life. Yo, they even went on tour with Michael Jackson on his European stop in the summer for the Dangerous tour. On tour with Michael Jackson. Yo, who can say that? Who in hip hop can say they went on tour with Michael Jackson? I don't think there's too many people who can say that, dog. So salute to the Double K's, man. And they were fashion treaders, man. Fashion. Uh, yeah, fashion trend, trendsetters in fashion. Look at me getting tongue tied because I'm so excited about the video. They were fashion trendsetters. They had the starter wave on deck, the coats, the jerseys. Uh, they're even on the uh, Instagram, uh, Mecca Pop, Mecca Palace Instagram for being trendsetters for the starter wave because Criss Cross did start the starter wave and as well as the backwards clothing, which was Lisa Left Eye and Jermaine Dupri's idea. They saw Chris Smith walk inside the crib with this big uh, Jabba jumper. Jermaine Dupri asked Chris Smith to uh, turn it backwards. Of course, at first, Chris Smith said no. And then Jermaine Dupri just, I guess, persuaded them to see the vision. Put it on backwards. They went to the mall. And people were in shock. So that's how they came with the totally crossed out idea. So yeah, uh, on the tour, you know what I'm saying? Millions of records, a lot of fans. The totally crossed out party was amazing from what I heard. That's where Method Man and Red Man actually met. So look at that. At the party, they put together a legendary duo. So that's dope. Uh, as a matter of fact, on this tour, according to Ed Lover, that's where uh, Chris Kelly lost his virginity. So a lot went down on the tour. They got to experience the actual rock star life as, as a youth. So salute to them. I definitely know they had uh, they had fun and definitely set records and got the plaques and got the money and endorsements and everything like that as kids. And you know what comes with that? There comes the hate. There were people hating on Criss Cross, of course. It can't be all sugar sweet. The groups hating on them. They had a legal hating on them another bad creation and the youngsters so i would say this as a crisscross fan in 93 they were kind of on the defensive end they did make hits but on this end they were like kind of responding to all the critics and people who did not like them uh you know what i'm saying uh, also naughty by nature tretch was a definitely an advocate he thinks that jump was copying off of opp i personally can't see the difference but that's what he said, you know, um, Jermaine Dupri was saying that Vinny didn't write his rhymes because people were saying that Criss Cross didn't write their first album, but they were like 11, 12 years old. You're going to have 11, 12 years old write a whole 14 song album? That doesn't even make any sense. Like, come on, dog. But anyway, that's how the whole big ring went about. Illegal drop, head of gut, uh, we gets busy, uh, the youngsters drop, cruise pop. This is before Criss Cross started recording uh the bomb because you know totally crossed out 92 that was their year man they were blowing people out the water what there wasn't a group or solo act doing what they were doing in that that uh year at all nobody was seeing them next you know 93 comes out people regroup and drop this records at them but you know the double k's um they had to step up to the plate and show what they can do so of course during the American Music Awards, all eyes on them, Mac Dad drops his verse from Freak to the Funk at live at the show, dissing ABC. Got them out of there. They were gone. You dissing a group live? Now, this is a verse. This was not one that totally crossed out. So this is a cooked up verse that they had to. He probably did this joint like a week or that day. Spit it live. Got them out of there. Uh... Then next thing you know, during the Who's the Man uh, album release party, um, this is where it could have got, things could have went left. Um, Tretch told the youngsters to go ahead and try to fight Criss Cross. Uh, at first, the youngsters were not going to do it, but Tretch said, yo, don't worry, man. I got my peoples here. We're going to mash out of anything. So when they try to punch Chris Smith, security guards move him out the way. And the funny thing was the brat was there, and the brat wanted to fight the youngsters for doing that. That would have been crazy in the wrong way because I don't like to see violence in hip hop personally. We all trying to get money, trying to live life. So all this unnecessary violence, isn't it? So I'm glad nothing went down. It was just arguing and everything like that back and forth. So yeah, around this time they recorded the bomb. Now, I think they recorded the bomb around May, between May. I say between May and August is when recording, mixing, and promo happened. Because Chris Kelly's voice matured pretty fast because as a matter of fact, after Totally Crossed Out released, his voice kind of changed within months to the deeper voice. And Daddy Mac's voice is still childlike. Just remember, Daddy Mac is, I think, like six months younger than him. So, yeah, so he matured, Chris Kelly matured faster. So, um, 
just based on that time frame and doing interviews during that time and TV shows and everything like that, I'm going to say the bomb was recorded between April and August of 1993. Um, yeah, the album was released in 1993, August. It had the Brad on there, Super Cat, All Right. Uh, there's a song that was supposed to be on there with Snoop Dogg, man, 321. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that song is crazy. I think that was like one of the couple first couple songs that they recorded because they were out in L.A. a lot. Uh, so Snoop Dogg and the Dog Pound, uh, they were hanging out with Crisscross Cross a lot. I think that's when they started smoking that stuff too, smoking weed. It's legal, so I can say, you know what I'm saying? They started smoking weed around then. Uh, reason being is because there's an interview that was online with Daz saying that Chris Kelly actually had an entanglement with Jada Pickett Smith, saying that he wanted them to stay in the room while he meets them, and he gave them like weed for them to chill out there while he talks to Jada Pickett. So yeah, they were, I think, I kind of think Snoop and the Dog Pound was the one who started, you know, making them uh, experiment with the greenery. Nothing wrong with that because it's legal, you know what I mean? But anyway, back to the bomb. Uh, the album was released August 1993, 700,000 copies in two Two weeks they're on a lot of talk shows there's plenty of videos of them on the late night show uh they also did arsenio hall as well so they were everywhere uh, as far as with the bomb being released uh there's pictures of them performing the bomb as well not as many as total totally crossed out we were definitely trying to find it but there's a lot of several pictures of them performing the bomb they went overseas for the bomb as well now those uh videos and pictures are online there's actually like a 30 35 minute video of them doing an interview overseas for the bomb a lot of people in the comments saying that they looked pretty annoyed and everything like that um i kind of didn't get that vibe they were being polite but at certain points you can tell that the Chris's were they just wanted to stop the interview especially towards the end <laughs> it's kind of funny but yeah you can check it out uh but yeah it's, uh, a lot of things you can see in that video too uh back to my uh, weed point but i'm not gonna get into that but yeah um during that the bomb tour they went to japan as well there's a video they did with the disney world in japan they came back uh, they did the super bowl event in january and they shot the bomb video 94. Uh, during this time as well uh, chris kelly was talking to chili allegedly um it's no secret there's pictures of him with uh Chili and uh, Chris Kelly. There's a couple pictures of them together and everything like, like that. Chris Kelly was a ladies' man, so salute to him. He would get all. He had all the baddies, man. That's what's up, man. Salute to my man. But yeah, uh, after the bomb, um, they were just chilling. They had pop-ups and events and you know what I'm saying seminars and conferences here and there. They were growing into their faces. They looked older. Uh, you can tell that they were definitely you know still growing as people. And we'll leave it at that. Uh, you can just tell that they were just experimenting everything in life uh, at that time um, Jermaine Dupri and Chris Kelly would bump heads according to Jermaine Dupri's book around that time what do you expect he's a teenager he's 15 16 years old he's trying to experience life you know what I mean he's not the 12 11 year old kid so that's within reason so you know they're gonna bump heads but it's nothing personal I mean it's just people grow up so yeah around that time in 95 that's when he cut his hair I'm gonna say 95 he cut his hair because when give it to you came out he came out the Lexus with baldy I mean, so I'm saying, so he cut his hair then, uh, they looked uh, definitely much older, and that's when they recorded the smooth, classic, final album under So So Death, Young, Rich, and Dangerous, which dropped January 1996, Tonight's the Night, the remix of Red Man's Crazy, Live and Die for Hip Hop, Young, Rich, and Dangerous, you know what I'm saying, Mac and Ain't Easy, those are my four favorite songs on the album. Album went platinum, the video for Tonight's the Night, and uh, Live and Die for Hip Hop is online uh those are the last two videos that they did uh they did shows here and there they did soul train and the bt uh event as well um i forgot what the name was the show but they did uh they performed live and die for hip-hop on bt and a lot of people saying during this time daddy mac wasn't interested in rhyming because if you look well i can see what they're saying because between totally crossed out he was moving and grooving then towards young rich and dangerous it seemed like he didn't care but according to an interview that he did there was never a time where he didn't want to stop making music so maybe the cameras caught him at a bad time because i i understand what people are saying that he didn't look interested people get tired i guess or he just wasn't feeling good but it is what it is 
Um, they did things here and there. Chris Kelly has a song with my man Ludacris on DJ Nav's album, which is on YouTube. They did the XXL cover with everybody in Harlem. They're on the right-hand side above Ice-T. Um, they had a fourth album, which was released on Joe the Butcher's uh, record label, Judgment Records. It's online to check it out. They actually did a reunion show I heard in 2001 uh, as well. Um, during the time Chris Kelly went to college, uh, he started his own record label as a CEO. He had artists as well. There's interviews of him with the artists. He had mixtapes on Dat Piff, Chris Smith. Um, he has a clothing line, Urban Muse. Uh, he also did the music as well, did his own thing. He was at open mics. He had he has a couple interviews online too. They are super hard to find, yo. Like there's links to the interview, but there's no audio. But he did do interviews around this time. Then they came back together in 2013 for the final So So Death show. That show was fire. It's online as well. They were gonna do a So So Death tour too. Chris Cross is gonna be one of the acts, and they were gonna plan on releasing new music and get back together. That'd been crazy, but ultimately. Uh, Chris Kelly transitioned uh, in May in 2013. So yeah, um, the legacy lives on. There's still hundreds of comments asking people for a visual biography, like a movie on them. Um, if there's any new music, people are still holding them on high regards as innovators and pioneers for the Atlanta hip hop scene as well for the youth. They inspire a lot of Atlanta artists. You know the amount of Atlanta artists, of Atlanta artists who are inspired by Criss Cross that we listen to, that went to school with them, that know them. A lot of people in the Atlanta area who are artists know about Criss Cross and knew them personally. Actually, I say about 80% of them do. You'd be surprised as well. The video would be too long for me to list, but practically everybody knew about them or knew them. But yeah. Salute to Criss Cross, the innovators, uh, influential pioneers of hip-hop for the city of Atlanta, as well as for the youth hip-hop. Um, their legacy is cemented. There will never be a duo to do what they have done in hip-hop at all. And you know what I'm saying? Uh, keep on inspiring. Keep on sharing, liking, and raise, raising awareness for the group, man. They definitely did their thing. Uh, I go by Jane 88 Salute to Carly Bennett for editing the video. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Until next time, y'all. Peace.